Hi everybody, David here with Via Render. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video on resolution and upscaling in Photoshop. So uh, I want to take a bit of time just to take a look at sort of the preset resolutions that you can render out at D5. And we're going to take a look at the time it takes to actually render these. And I also want to look at whether it's better to take the time to do a high level 8K resolution render from D5, or to maybe think about upscaling it in Photoshop. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and put my display back to high here. And you can see we have a D5 scene. This was a blender to D5 scene that um, I used for an Instagram render. So a couple of things on this, I'm gonna just X out of the render mode and, and show you everyone. Um, we can see we've got about just under 4 million faces. I've got about 17 lights in the scene, so quite a lot of um, supplementary lights. And it's, um, you know, it's, it's not a crazy detailed or complicated scene, but the lights were, are definitely going to add to your render time. Okay, so what we've actually done is we get into the render mode and using the same settings, same field of view. We've gone ahead and rendered out a 2K image, a 4K, a 6K, and an 8K image. So now that you guys have seen what the scene looks like, I'm gonna go ahead and put this display back to low. And we're gonna bounce over to Photoshop. Okay, so over here, we can take a look, and I'm gonna zoom out here in Photoshop. And what we're gonna do is just examine all of these rendered images and see whether it's worthwhile to take that bit of extra time to render at a higher resolution. Okay, so looking at these images, I'm gonna just scale them out a little bit and take a look at them individually and look at the quality of the renders individually. Okay, the first we wanna look at is the 2K image. Um, you know, kind of looking at this from back here, just looking at it on the screen or in Photoshop, or really, if you were looking at this as an attachment in an email, it looks really, really good. Now, we should point out, I didn't even bother recording the render time for this from D5, mostly because it kind of barely registered. I think this was a handful of seconds. So I'm working on a kind of a, a 4K monitor here, which probably doesn't translate very well to YouTube. But effectively, that means that D5 is sort of downscaling the resolution uh, from my monitor for the render. Now, if we go back, it's not terribly bad looking from back here. I think there's a lot to like about it. Again, this is more to the testament to the strengths of D5. Where the 2K start falling apart is, is when you zoom in. And you can see here, I've jumped in by 200% if you see on the bottom left corner of our Photoshop interface. And you can kind of see this is where things start to kind of fall apart a little bit. If we look at our ballerina model, um, you can see the whole face is kind of just crumbled. And if we look at any of the fine detail, particularly this area, the center or focal piece of the room, I mean, you can kind of see that, you know, the ornament has just kind of become this kind of blobby kind of mess. So, you know, realistic uses for this, um, 2K, I, I think at this point is effectively a test render. Um, you know, this is, I think 2K has become kind of like the modern version of Lumion's email resolution or for some people, the desktop resolution. It's, it's, it's fine for looking at stuff and testing, but you're not going to be sending this really to any client and you're certainly not going to be putting this up on your own gallery. I think it's a test render and that's about all it is. Okay, let's go ahead and remove the 2K. I think we're done with that. Now, um, this brings us to the next one, which is the 4K test. So um, in terms of time, this took me at 4K, it was about a little over two minutes in D5, bearing in mind again, the more lights you add to the scene, the longer the scene is going to take, basically the more bounces and the more sort of work that you're asking D5 to do. Now, I don't think two and a half minutes isn't too bad. So if we take a look at the fidelity, again, if we look at the picture face, the, the model, I think it looks pretty good. The face keeps a lot of the detail. 
If we zoom down here to the ornamentation, you can definitely see that this does a really good job of keeping some of the fidelity details. You're getting the reflections, you're getting the, the highlights, the caustics, the, the sort of look of the decorative element carries over and the reflective areas look really, really good. Um, you can see even the fabric looks pretty good. I mean, 4K is not, is not a bad render size. Um, people often think that 4K is actually double uh, just a 2K. I don't think that's actually true. If we take a look at this resolution comparison chart that I grabbed from online, I mean, you can see the 2K image here is 2048 by 1080. Um, a 4K or what we consider an ultra HD, um, you know, ultra high definition, it's, it's actually four times more pixels because you're rendering it length and breadth. So it's, it's not double per se. Um, at least in my mind, it's four times more. I mean, a 4K image is still pretty good. It really is. Um, I know there's quite a number of people on the D5 forum who complained about the quality of sort of 4K images. Um, I'm not entirely sure that that complaint is necessarily valid. Um, I think, you know, that there's a fidelity issue, definitely. But if we take a look at the 6K image, and let's kind of compare. One common refrain on the forums is to render at a higher resolution and then downscale. Um, again, you know, you could argue some of this is personal preference and some of this is what we actually learn to do from other people online. Um, I'm not entirely sure that it's necessary. You can look at the face difference here. 6K is obviously going to be a higher resolution. That's not questionable. The question comes down to, is it worth it? So the 4K image took about two and a bit minutes. The 6K image with the exact same camera settings took exactly five minutes. Now, zoomed out, you know, I, I think a lot of people would have a hard time maybe telling the difference. So, I mean, here we go. Here's our, our 6K image. And I'm gonna pull these back out to about 50%. Uh, trying, you know, trying to match these up as best I can. I think 66% on this one is about the same as the 50% here. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the 6K image is always going to be a higher resolution, sure. But is it worth the extra rendering time? And are the vast majority of people going to notice the difference? I don't know that they actually will. Now, you could argue, well, if I make changes and edits to this, it's always better to work on a higher resolution than downscale. And that is definitely true. If you have to go in and make changes, if you need to go in and fix lighting problems, or for example, I have this emissive light you can see running across the top that I, I really don't really love. Um, I don't think it was the best thing to put in there, but you could go ahead and maybe crop that out and get away with it a little bit better um, and then come down to downscale the image and maybe that will help a lot. Um, I'm not convinced maybe that 6K and downscaling is the way to go, but if you have the time, sure, go for it. Now, this brings us to the second thing, which is the 8K image. Um, now, this is the 8K image. There, there shouldn't be really any visual look in terms of color or appearance, but if we go ahead and zoom in here, um, interestingly enough, there is a slight lighting difference. Now, where that's coming from, I'm not actually sure. Um, you know, you can see the 8K, there does seem to be kind of a lighting change between the 4K, the 6, and the 8, which is kind of interesting to me. Not entirely sure where that's coming from. Um, there's just no denying, like, the 8K image is just going to be so, so high resolution. Um, you just, you, you really do get, obviously... What is that? I think it's almost like 16 times, I think, uh, bigger than the 2K. So yeah, the, the fidelity is, is absolutely superb. Obviously, this comes at render time. Um, the gap here was just, it was eight minutes. So you're, you're exponentially getting higher. Now, when you look at the 4K to the 8, so I'm gonna try and just pop these over and try and get this to line up nicely. Here's our 4K. And I'm gonna move the 8K to the right um, and just scale this back down here. And again, this ornament is, is the perfect example. 
Again, the 4K looked nice. It looked really, really good. The caustics look great. But the, I mean, just the detail here is absolutely staggering. I mean, you're getting room detail that you couldn't really envision in the lower resolutions. The question is, is, is it worth it time-wise? Um, and that's kind of a difficult one to say. The, the vast majority of your clients are probably not looking for an 8K image. Um, 8K is, is in many ways still just a little bit ahead of the curve. Um, I know there's some really great YouTube videos of gamers playing games on 8K you know, projectors and monitors, and, and then it does look stunning. Um, for our purposes, for like architectural rendering and visualization and furniture rendering and, you know, interior visualizations or even interior design, um, 8K d it does seem a little, a little bit much to me right now. Now, the other thing is, um, what about upscaling? So what we're going to do next is just take a quick look and see, can we go ahead and upscale some of the lower resolution images and see what they look like. Okay, so in the next bit here, I, I just want to talk a little bit about upscaling and can we use um, really just Photoshop technology to kind of upscale an image. And I'm going to get this 4K image. This was the one we talked about that, as we mentioned before, you know, represents a good blend between speed, efficiency, and, you know, kind of the resolution that clients are going to be looking for. I'm going to go up to image, and I'm going to go to image size. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and sort of just double this. Uh, so what we're looking for is to get this up to 8,192. So I'm going to go image, image size, 8,192. And this is, I believe, preserved details is, I think, somebody please correct me if I'm wrong on this. Um, this is Photoshop's AI sort of powered um, upscaler. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on that and I'm going to leave everything just default and let's click OK. So what we've done is effectively asked Photoshop to figure out how to turn this 4K image into an 8K image. All right, we're going to do the same test again. Let's actually look at the foliage here really quickly. So again, this is a 4K image that just got upsized to 8K. And over here, we have the original 8K image. And I'm going to zoom in to try and get things kind of comparable. So, yeah, I mean, I, I do think the image sort of speaks for itself, to be honest. Yes, this image is, the 4K is now an 8K, cool. Um, is the fidelity there? Like, I, I still think that the D5's 8K is still sharper in many ways. Um, we can take a look at the face really quickly, which is a good test. So again, you know, here we go. Here's the 4K that has been upscaled to eight. And then here is the actual original eight. So the four to eight, and then the actual eight. Um, I'm not gonna say Photoshop can't do a goodish job. Yeah, it definitely can. Um, if we look at, for example, the ornament again, this is the four that recently, be oop, the four that recently became an eight. Let me zoom out again. And yeah, you, you do get an increase in resolution, absolutely. But you, what you don't get is just the additional content. Um, I mean, you can see the difference right there. Yeah, it's increased in size. It looks, you know, really good, even zoomed in. But ultimately, you know, the, the 8K resolution is just that. I mean, it's, it's something that is natively 8K. So you could argue, though, if you're going to scale these up, you know, and then maybe downscale the 4K again. So, for example, let's say we go back to the 4 that has become the 8, and we duplicate this layer. And then we go filter, and we go other, and high pass, which is kind of my favorite way of sharpening something. And we just go ahead and tweak this just a little bit, the radius. And we change the blend mode to overlay. Um, and then we right click and merge this down. This is the type of thing you do sort of in post production. Um, and then you're like, okay, I'm going to resize this image, image size, and let's bring it back down to what is it, 1496. 
and preserve details again and click OK. Um, I'm going to zoom out a wee bit. Wee. Uh, wait. Is that still necessarily any better than what you'll get when you render it natively at 8K? The answer is no, just unequivocally no. Is it then better ultimately to just commit? You're going to lose, you know, this was almost 10 minutes of time for just a single shot. So if you were to do a gallery of shots, you're, you're looking at, you know, easily 30, 40 minutes just setting up four shots alone, all of this resolution. But at the same time, um, I would probably argue that if you're going to do it and you're going to do it correctly, then commit the time. Yeah, you could set up four lower resolution so, uh, like shots and, and they'd probably look fine. Um, but I don't think upscaling is going to fix, you know, and it's not going to make things better um, to my mind. It's not going to create content where content just didn't exist before, at least not using this current method. Now, um, I will say I have had some success with, you know, Photoshop intelligently filling in pixels, especially on things that are more human focused. It seems to do, do that just fine. One last thing I do want to test though, is here is our 2K image. And, and we said, this is very much like, you know, this is, this is kind of thumbnail, modern thumbnail size. Let's see, can we do the same again? Let's see, can we upscale this to 8192? So go image, image size. This is kind of gonna be a very good test for Photoshop's preserve details 2.0. And see, can it generate effectively content really from nothing? And if we zoom out, um, whoop, let's try that again. I mean, in many ways it did, but you're seeing major artifacts. You can really see it around the glow here on the lights. Uh, you can see the faces done. I mean, it's, I'm not going to say it's great. It's, it's, it's not. You, you are asking Photoshop to effectively work magic here. Um, I mean, you, you could get away with it and you could make adjustments and changes. You know, you could go in here, um, grab a soft, fluffy paintbrush, go ahead and start, you know, maybe painting in some, a little bit of kind of light blasting through the windows maybe. Um, yeah, you could kind of probably do something a little bit like that and maybe change it to like lighten your screen and then go ahead and resize it back down. And I think it'll probably still look better. So it might be great for making edits um, but you know, it can't, it can't produce magic. So, um, a couple of takeaways on this for most renders, I, I still think 4k is fine. You know, if we just go ahead and I'm just going to close out of this, uh, altered one and I just go ahead and just go file open and we go back to our 4k. I still think this resolution is absolutely fine. Um, you know, this will get you most of the way there. If you've got the time, 6K is probably not a bad way to go and you can always downscale again. But I think going forward, I think I'm, I'm sort of convinced that the 8K is definitely the way to go. Just take the extra time, um, you know, go take a mental break, go make a cup of coffee, go do whatever, come back. You'll have an amazing render. Um, but you may be at the start, do a quick little 2K render just to make sure things are good before you hit the 8K. Okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you found it interesting. Um, I'm going to try and do a lot more of these type of videos. Um, they're partially deep dives and they're partially just my own opinion uh, based on doing this stuff for quite a few years now and teaching this. Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. Thanks for watching and um, I'll see you guys soon. Bye.